you were peacefully conquering another planet when suddenly Bytros invade your outpost. You want to rush back as fast as you can, but you can't. You are not ready for interplanetary travel yet. It started with a small breach, then an outpost went down. Production stalled, and before you know it, your entire base is at risk. What was once a harmless attack is now threatening your survival. Did this happen only because you forgot to resupply your turrets in time? Today, we'll make sure that never happens again. Let's start from the beginning with the core question, what is automated outpost maintenance and why do you even need it? Automated outpost maintenance means your outposts are able to defend themselves and be ready for the next attack indefinitely without you having to lift a finger. Outposts are much more than just little mining stations scattered around the map, they're your factory lifeline, they supply the copper, the iron, the coal, all the fundamental resources that everything else in your base depends on. If one outpost stops working, it doesn't just affect that location, it can choke your smelters, stall your production lines, and eventually bring your entire factory to a standstill. But here's the problem, unlike your main base, outposts are far away and that distance matters. Every time biters attack, they slowly wear down your defenses, walls take damage, ammo drains from turrets, and all tanks for flamethrowers start to empty. When an attack happens right outside your core base, you can react quickly. But when it's hundreds of tiles away, or worse, on the other side of the map, it's not so simple. By the time you even notice the issue, the outpost could already be in ruins. And the further you go into the game, the more outposts you'll have. One or two isn't too bad, you can check it manually every now and then, but when you're managing 5, 10 or even more, it becomes overwhelming, you spend more time running around fixing walls and refilling ammo than actually growing your factory. And remember, defenses don't maintain themselves, gun turrets need to be fed with magazines, flamethrower turrets burn through oil, artillery turrets require a steady supply of shells. If you don't keep them stocked, they'll simply stop firing when you need them the most. Walls also degrade over time. A single weak point can cause a chain reaction, biters break through, turrets get destroyed, trains get wrecked, and suddenly the outpost is gone. And rebuilding it is always more expensive than preventing the collapse in the first place. What makes this even more challenging is how the game pushes you further out as time goes on. The ore patches close to your main base will eventually run dry, forcing you to establish outposts deeper and deeper into hostile territory, longer travel times, more logistics, more places that need protection. Without automation, it's only a matter of time before keeping everything alive becomes unmanageable. That's why automation isn't just a convenience, it's a necessity if you want your factory to survive and scale. So now that we've looked at why outpost maintenance is such a problem, let's break down what you'll actually need to keep one running. At the simplest level, it's the same stuff you'd bring if you were managing it manually. The only difference is that we'll set things up so the game handles it automatically instead of you running around with repair packs in your pocket. Let's start with defenses. Every turret type has its own supply chain. Flamethrower turrets need oil, and while you can feed them crude or heavy oil, light oil is by far the best option. It burns hotter and deals more damage. Gun turrets, of course, need magazines, and once you reach uranium ammo, they shoot through biters like nothing else. Artillery is another layer of defense, but it won't fire a single shot without shells, and those shells are bulky, so you need a steady flow of them delivered over time. But ammunition is only part of the story, your structures themselves won't last forever under constant attack. That's where repair packs come in. They're essential for patching up walls and turrets after every wave. And don't forget, sometimes, repairs aren't enough, a wall section or turret will eventually fall. To prepare for that, you'll want to stockpile replacements, walls, turrets of every type, artillery pieces, most of what you've placed once, expect to replace again. And turrets don't magically reload themselves, you need inserters constantly feeding magazines into gun turrets. Without automation here, your turrets will eventually fall silent, leaving your defenses wide open. Now let's move on to logistics. This is where everything ties together, you rely on the logistic networks to move items around your outpost automatically. That means you'll need logistic robots to shuttle supplies like ammo, oil barrels and shells to where they're needed. Construction robots to repair damage and rebuild destroyed defenses. Requester chests placed next to turrets or structures so they can ask for what they need. Storage chests to hold supplies ensuring resources can be available on the network. And finally, roboports, 
the backbone of the whole system. Without RoboPulse, your robots have nowhere to charge and your logistic network simply doesn't exist. But your robots can only distribute what they're given. That's why you need a train station at each outpost. The train is the lifeline, bringing all the resources from your main base to the front line. Without it, your chest will eventually run dry and your defenses will stop working. And finally, powering it all is absolutely critical. Power is the silent requirement behind every system. Inserters want load ammo, robopoles want charge robots, laser threads want fire, all without electricity. You can run power poles from your main grid or set up local production with solar panels and accumulators. Either way, no power means no defenses. So when you pull it all together, maintaining an outpost requires ammo, oil, artillery shells, repair packs, replacement defenses, inserters, a full logistic robots network, trains to bring in supplies, and reliable power to keep it all running. So now we know what an outpost needs to keep running, let's look at the important part, how to actually automate it. The first thing you'll want to set up is a logistic network at your outpost. This is what makes the whole system self-sustaining. Place RoboPorts so that their coverage areas overlap, creating one continuous network. If you leave gaps between them, your robots won't be able to cross and that can leave terrace or walls stranded without supplies or repairs. A good habit is to always check the RoboPorts are connected between them with a dotted line. Also, make sure everything that needs to be repaired is inside the construction area of your RoboPorts and everything that needs resources to be either picked up or delivered is inside the logistic area which is small. Inside the RoboPorts, you need two different types of robots. Construction robots, they are responsible for keeping your defenses intact. They fly out and repair walls, replace turrets, and even rebuild structures destroyed in battle. As long as you've got the materials available in your logistic network. Logistic robots, on the other hand, handle distribution. They're the ones that will carry magazines to turrets, deliver shells to artillery, and drop off repair packs wherever they're needed. Of course, robots don't just act on their own, they rely on logistic chests to know what to move and where. This is where your setup comes to life. For flamethrower turrets, connect them with pipes and make sure they're facing outward towards the enemy. Use storage tanks to build up a healthy buffer of oil. Light oil is the best choice since it deals the most damage, but crude oil will work if you don't have a refined setup yet. Just make sure the supply is steady, because a flamethrower turret that runs dry is basically useless. For gun turrets, the setup is a little bit more complex. Place a requester chest next to the turret and connect it with an inserter. Configure the chest to request magazines, preferably uranium magazines, once you can make them. A good starting point is 50 per chest, but you can raise that if you want a bigger buffer. The inserter will handle the loading and the boss will keep the chest topped up. Once this is in place, your gun turrets will never fall silent. For artillery turrets, the same principles applies. A requester chest plus an inserter to feed its shells. Artillery shells are bulky, so you'll want to request them in larger amounts. Keep in mind that as soon as you pour up artillery, it will begin shelling nests far away, which in turn triggers attacks. So don't activate it until you know your defenses are strong enough to handle the retaliation waves. And finally, laser turrets. They are by far the simplest to automate since they don't require ammo or inserters. All they need is power, but don't underestimate this requirement. If your power grid dips even slightly, laser threats fire slower and weaker, and that can collapse your defenses very quickly. If you rely on lasers, always ensure you have enough power generation and storage to keep them firing at full capacity. So at this point, you've automated how your defenses reload and repair themselves, but there's still one missing piece, a continuous supply of resources. Even the best logistic network will eventually run out unless it's constantly restocked. That's where your train delivery system comes in. Here is a step-by-step -step process. Start at your main base. Make sure you have strong production lines for all essentials, ammo, artillery shells, oil barrels, repair packs, and replacement structures like walls and turrets. Output these into provider chests so the logistic network has access to them. Then, you need to load your trains. At your train loading station, use requester chests connected to inserters to automatically fill your trains with supplies. This way, every time the train leaves, is carrying exactly what your outpost needs without you lifting a finger. Finally, set the schedule. Add your outpost stations to the train schedule. When a train arrives at an outpost, set up unloading with inserters that place everything into storage chests. From there, the local logistic robots will distribute items to request their chest. And just like that, you've created a closed loop. Your main base manufactures the resources. Your trains deliver them. Your logistic network distributes them. And 
your construction robots repair and replace structures. The output runs itself, even under heavy attacks. The real strength of this setup is that it scales naturally. After you've refined one output setup, you can reuse the same design as a starting point for future ones. Each output will require tweaks, but the logistic and defense principles stay the same. As long as your main base can keep producing enough supplies and your trains are scheduled correctly, you can run 5, 10 or even more outposts with almost no extra effort. That's the core of automation, production, trains and robots. Get all three working together and your outposts won't just survive, they'll thrive. Without you ever needing to babysit them again. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. And if you find this useful, give the video a like and make sure you subscribe so you're ready for the next one.